It's a beautiful day today. I've been up for a little while. And I was just reading in the book, kind of uploading those upper other videos I had, some thoughts. And I got in the mail yesterday, Days of Praise from ICR. It's a devotional for September, October, November. And today is September 1st. So, you know, pretty short, just one little page a day. I got my decaf coffee. I'm having it black. I have a little cereal. Um, yeah, today I'm going to go to work. I'll study at work, the biology book. I have a something that's due tomorrow. I have to work tomorrow. My only days off now are Tuesday, Thursday. That's the days I have biology class. And... Yeah, if you want to get this, it's free. And so is their magazine, Acts and Facts, where many PhDs, astrophysicists, MDs give their scientific proof that the Bible is account as true. Now, days of praise. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make, my, make thy way straight before my face. This is interesting. Dear Christian friend, every one of us leads others for good or ill. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, our businesses, and our own civil, civil government are in need of good leaders. The Bible is not without encouraging information about the role and character of good leadership. We are fortunate to have the inspired records of the lives of great men like Moses and Joshua, who are given enormous responsibility. Within the circumstances of their lives are many excellent examples and principles that can help us with our specific responsibilities. Those principles are valid whether we are leading thousands or striving to set a good example for our families. Good leadership to say nothing of godly leadership is part of the good gift and every perfect gift that is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. First James, or James 1.17. Sincerely yours in Christ, Henry M. Morris, the third chief executive officer. And look at that. So, I'm not the best reader, but I'm going to read it. Saturday, September 1st. I'm going to pray real quick. God, open my eyes to this. Open my heart. Don't let me gloss over this. But weigh my heart in your loving hands for Christ's glory. Amen. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Exodus 3.10 Now this is... Where's the camera? Oh, it's down there. There you are. Saturday, September 1st. Moses was 80 years old when God issued this official call for him to lead Israel out of slavery and head up a new nation. Many people had been used by God to prepare Moses for that moment. <clears throat> Including a wicked Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. Exodus 1 8. Exodus 1 8. Oh, no, not Joseph. Hmm. Exodus 1 8. So he knew not Joseph. That's that's the the one who God blessed Israel. I mean, uh, blessed Egypt with in the times of famine. He placed him as a high advisor. So he knew not Pharaoh. I mean, he knew not Joseph. Exodus one eight. And he set awful taskmasters over Israel to keep them subjugated. 
One that failed to contain them, Pharaoh ordered that the Hebrew midwives to kill all the male newborns. But Shifra and Pua, the bosses of the midwives, refused, lied to Pharaoh, and allowed the nation to grow very mightily. Exodus 1.20 Moses' mother, Jochbed, made special provisions to save him, caring for him secretly at home for three months. When, there was, when that was no longer possible, she prepared an ark and put Moses in the reeds with his sister. His sister's name was Miriam. Beautiful name. To watch over him. Exodus 2, 3 through 4. The daughter of Pharaoh had compassion on Moses and accepted Miriam's offer to find a Hebrew woman to nurse him. Jochbed was given the task until he was taken into Pharaoh's house. Exodus 2, 5 through 10 where he was educated by the greatest empire on earth at the time and all their knowledge. All of that and every one of these people were involved in preparing Moses for his leadership role. Even the evil Pharaoh and the awful condition of the Israelites were part of the human drama God used to bring about the exodus of Israel. We may not be privileged to see God's plan unfolding in our lives, um, but be sure that he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay. Um, I guess... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't feel 100% uh, about everything that they said. Um, we may not be privileged to see God's plan unfolding in our lives. I, I don't agree with that, but I still like the devotional. I think we, we do see God's plan in history. We have his entire word, and we see it with ourselves as we confront sin. And uh, But, you know, everything I say... I'm fallible. Everybody's fallible. I don't quite agree with that statement specifically that um, we're not privileged. I guess they're talking about God talking directly to you in a burning bush. But the thing is, we have God's entire word. So we do see his plan and whom he chose to reveal it to. And God, thank you for the wonderful people at ICR. I hope that I'm not insulting anybody. And I do pray for Henry M. Morris, Ph.D., Henry M. Morris the Third, and I think this is Henry M. Morris the Third. I pray for them and thank them for sending me this free gift. And thank you, Lord, for your gift, all your gifts, and your beloved Son. In his name I pray, Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen. Thank you for a uh, good little bit of coffee. Well...